So I've been out to the beach to test the lychee active tracking. Is it lychee or lychee? I'm still not sure. Let me know in the comments down below. But I've tested the active tracking and now I want to show you my results, show you some of the quirks, some of the issues I've had with it, and also some of the good points, and just let you see how my testing went. Let's take a look at the footage. Okay, so here I am at the beach. I'd fired up the Lychee app, and the first thing I did was make sure my camera settings are right. So I set it to 4K and 30 FPS, and I just left all the other settings in auto for this test. And then I took my drone off, and I flew it out over the sea. My plan was to get tracking shots of me walking along the beach. I also thought was, this was a fairly safe way to try it out because the drone would be out over the sea. So I kind of got it roughly into position and then I selected tracking up the top left. And this is where you might get caught out. You automatically presume from other apps that you would just drag the box over yourself, but you actually have to use two fingers and pinch the box over yourself, which seemed a little counterintuitive and took me a little minute to get used to. And another thing I worked out was that the drone needs to be in normal mode. It won't work in Cine. And here's where I made another mistake. You need to actually tap the start tracking button here. I wrongly presumed just because the box went green that it was tracking me. And it did seem to be kind of tracking me. Uh, but what I later worked out was if you don't hit that start tracking button, the drone will stay stationary in the air. It will rotate to start tracking you, but it won't actually move. So it was losing tracking. Here you'll see a second attempt, but I didn't hit the tracking button again. And so you'll see that the drone won't move and sooner or later it loses you and will stop tracking you. Once I figured out that you need to hit the start tracking button, I find the tracking to be sometimes good and sometimes bad as you'll see now. So you hit the start tracking button, confirm you want to start. And in this example here, this should be a really easy track. The drone's close to me, I stand out well from the background, but you can see it immediately loses me. So I flew out a bit just to see if that would make any difference. And then I got told that the altitude wasn't high enough for the track, which seemed a little strange. But I flew up higher, uh, so the altitude would be higher enough, and then I started the track. And although it didn't look like it was going to track me well at the start, because the box was quite large, It, this time it actually done a fairly decent track as you can see although the box did stay large It started to kind of shrink down around me as the tracking went on and it did a it did an okay job You can see as I walk along here the drone is tracking me okay I mean, the motion's not super smooth, but it, it is tracking me. Then I took it higher to try that out. Again, I thought this would be a fairly easy track as I, I stood out well from the background. I started the track and it just lost me straight away. You can see it, it gives up after a few seconds. So another attempt, and when I started it, you can see that this time it looks like it's locked onto me well. So I actually started to run to see how that would work. And you can see it tracks me okay for a few seconds and then it just gives up. It just gives up after a few seconds. So at this point in time, I wasn't feeling particularly confident on the tracking, but actually then in my next few attempts, I got a really good track. So here's another attempt. You can see that it's locked onto me. And again, I start to run. And although the box gets quite large at the start, it then seems to shrink down and, and it locks onto me really well. And this time it did a really good job of tracking me. You can see it tracks me continuously here. And it's actually pretty smooth. I, I would consider this to be a fairly decent track. As I run along this beach here, it does a pretty good job of tracking me. Again, another attempt. The drone is fairly close here. And again, I thought I'd run just to see how well it tracks me. So I, I look back at it just to make sure that it's following me along the beach. And then I start to run. And you can see here, again, it's tracking me with no issues. I think if the box locks on you closely, that's a pretty good indication that it's got a good track of you. And this, again, is a, a, a really good track. I'm pretty happy with how that track turned out. So this time I was up high again to try that out. You can see it just doesn't work well if you're a small spot on the screen. Again, it gives up there very quickly. So 
Here's another attempt of a pretty close track. And you can see this time, it looks like it's gonna track and then it just immediately loses me. It, it just seems so hit or miss. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it just loses you straight away. So for my last track, I wanted to try something a little bit more complicated. So I made sure the box is quite small around me. I made sure it seemingly had a good track and then I headed towards this rocky pass through area. And you can see it initially tracks me pretty well. I wasn't feeling super confident that it would track me well once I got to this rocky bit, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway for the sake of testing it. And as you can see, even as I start to approach this rocky area, it just starts to lose me. The box starts getting too big. You can see here already it's lost the track. Even though it hasn't said it's lost the track, it's clearly stopped tracking me. And you can see it just loses track of me. So what are my final thoughts after this initial testing? Well, although I had one or two tracks which were actually fairly decent, overall, I wasn't that impressed. It seems very inconsistent and very hit or miss. You could be doing two of the same types of tracks in the same area, same distance between you and the drone, drone at the same angle, everything the same, and the first time it would track you well, and the second time it would give up almost immediately, which seems very inconsistent. Also, if you don't stand out well from the background or the scene itself is very complicated, you're not gonna get a good track. But when it does finally work, it does track you. So would I rely on this if I was trying to get cinematic shots? Absolutely not. Would it do in a pinch? Possibly it could save you in a situation where you just really needed to get that shot and the smoothness of it wasn't a concern and you were willing to give it a couple of attempts, then yeah, it might be okay in them scenarios. But why not go download the Light app yourself Head out, give the active tracking a test, and let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.